Hey gang, Scott here. In this video, we'll take a look at the split field filter. This is one of the new filters in Photo Raw 2026. Now, Photo Raw 2026 is uh, releasing uh, toward the end of October in 2025, and so it's not quite out yet as I record this and share this video. I'm working with a pre-release version of the software, so when you get your hands on Photo Raw 2026, if it looks a little bit different, you understand why. And speaking of which, if you want to get in on the pre-orders, I've got an extra coupon code down there for you, an offer code that will knock an extra 10 bucks off the price, and that's in addition to whatever a sale or a promotion that On One's doing right now. And that code's only valid through the end of October of 2025. So check the show notes; you'll see that down there. Uh, let's have a look at split field and see what it does. I am in the effects portion of Photo Raw 2026 and split field is part of the creative collection here. So I'll click split field and you'll see the photo kind of just jumped. It just changed, right? Turn that filter off, turn it on. A bunch of things just got magnified. Well, split field is uh, mimicking what, uh, you know, a optical split diopter would do where you could you know, old school, put something in front of your lens and magnify a portion of the image. Or when we go into layers and play layering games to layer a photo with itself and try to make the background be a little more prominent, especially helpful when you're using wide angle lenses. So what do we have in the filter? And we have a few styles and really the, the action is in the sliders. But honestly, it's easier to work on the screen. But we'll work down here. You have scale, you know, how big or small you're going to make that magnification, whether or not you want to blur the areas that have been magnified. I'll come back to adjust magnified region in a moment. Distance, angle, and transition. Distance is, you know, how close or how far away are we doing that transition. The angle at which it happens, you can see that tilting there. And then the transition, how soft or how uh, crisp is that transition. Let me get those all back to default. And when I hover over the, the photo itself, I find it much easier to work with distance, angle, and transition with the on-screen uh, effectively bug. This is very similar to the masking bug when you do gradient masks. And so this center circle, I'm using that to position where do I want the transition. And this will work very well where photos, where you've got an area that has a more uniform transition. You know, if you do something on top of the rock here like this, you're going to get some very strange artifacting. So this is helpful for photos where you've got some segment of the image that's pretty uniform. I'll adjust that feather out a little bit. And just for you know uh, illustrative purposes, I can adjust the angle with the small circle there, just like the masking bug. Let me set that angle back to zero. And now I've got that uh, position there. And you can see I've made that background rock come forward more, more prominent. It's really magnifying everything that's above uh, the center of our, um, our, our transition, our gradient control here. Back to magnified region, you know, adjusting it. Hit that crosshair, and now on the photo, I've got my crosshair here, I can drag the position of this, and I can go up really far, and this is going to feel familiar to those of you that used to do this kind of work with layers. But here, I'll, uh, I'll drag this to the right a little bit, and I'm really just kind of rebalancing the composition in this particular photo. So this rock is you know, a little uh, a little more, um, you know, uh, I guess, in line with the rest of the image. And so that's split field. So you know, before that change, after, just bringing that background closer to the, uh, the, uh, the frame, you know, bringing it closer to your viewer. I want to show you a couple of other photos where some cases you can you can get away with using the split field filter, and then you know a couple that you, you just can't. It's just not going to work for every photo. So let's look at a couple of other examples. Now here's an example where I've applied split field and actually applied it to the foreground. You'll notice that my angle control on this uh, widget is on the left hand side. So I took it from here and dragged it all the way over. You can see on the angle slider that's pushed pretty far to the right and the transition's very tight. Why did I do that? I wanted to make the people a little more prominent. Here's the original photo without the split field. Here's split field. So making the foreground a little bit bigger. And I wanted to bring these folks, uh, you know, just bring them a little more prominent in the scene. And I had to choose this angle pretty carefully given the photo. I couldn't get into the waves. You'd end up with some, some interesting, you know, problems with lining things up there. And, uh, 
One little problem is this bit of ghosting on where the two uh, walkers on the beach were originally, from there to here. And that's just the nature of that transition. You know, I can try to angle that away a little bit, but really it's just not going to work out too well. That angle I chose was about as good as I could get it. So what can I do to fix that up? If you're thinking healing brush or perfect eraser, things like that, you're correct. However, you'd want to do this with a new stamped layer. You would have to go into layering for this. That's really going to be your best bet. And the reason why is when you use things like the healing brush, you're going to be working on the original pixels in your photo. I'll show you what I mean because it can start to get very confusing very fast when you're trying to do a heal, say, uh, once you've applied a split field. So here's a healing brush. Great mode is heal overlay. And I would just come down in here and say, all right, let me just get rid of this like little person right here. And it selects something. And that one's not so bad because I'm kind of choosing something out here. But notice what's going on. This erase is looking good, but notice what's happening with this person here. You know, it's just kind of, it's kind of wonky. It's kind of strange. And the same kind of thing will happen with this one. I'm, I'm ending up erasing like the original subject. Yeah, they're gone from where they were, but as I've expanded them and changed split field, uh, I'm, I'm erasing the original subjects. And so that's just, it's not going to work, right? It's just not going to work its way out of that. So I'm undoing a bunch of that. How would I really go about it? Going up into layers. Let me get rid of my uh, healing brush. Going up into layers, you know, making a duplicate of the layer. And um, actually even better is really to do a uh, um, duplicate like this. Okay and then say, give me a new stamped layer. That gives me a whole new set of pixels. And then I do my work on the new stamped layer, heal. And then I can go ahead and take care of these things. Because otherwise you are dealing with this interesting fact of when your healing brush gets applied, that's happening before your effects filters. And when that, that uh, split field goes on there, you're magnifying what you healed. Like I said, it gets kind of confusing, kind of wonky. So if you find that you need to do a little bit of retouching after you've applied split field, do some layering work, get yourself a new stamp layer, do everything, and then you can collapse your layer stack down and be good to go. One more example of a photo where the split field doesn't really lend itself. There's just too much going on in the midground of the photo. In this image, I would really like to be able to bring up the, uh, the background here, these C stacks, and make them a little more prominent. But when we go and try and do that with split field, and this same challenge exists with layers and so forth, I get this up to about here, and then maybe my angle can be tilted a little bit, but notice what's going on. Like if I get to about here, okay, the, the rocks here look pretty good. It looks you know, kind of okay to begin with, but then I have some artifacting out at the far left of the beach. Like if I were to do this magnified region and pull this stuff over, you notice that, that like doubling down on water on the beach. And so I'm kind of back into that same arena of dealing with stamped layers to go do some cleanup. But then there's more. If I, I move my cursor out of the way and we'll just zoom in, look at the duplication on a couple of the rocks uh, in this area, kind of, you know, to, uh, to the left of the main subject. That is just something I, I have trouble getting rid of. I change the distance. You can see I can get one of those rocks to disappear. But now, you know, what are the problems I have elsewhere? Uh, I've got a problem at the tip of of my subject. I can't have that going on. Uh, I have problems at the beach. I start to see some bits of artifacting in the ocean that's kind of masked by the fact that there's so much churn going out there. But you get the idea here. When there are enough things that are encroaching on a clean or cleanish cut line through your photo, 
the split field is going to give you some challenges. And so if you really needed to do some of this magnification work in that scenario, you're probably going into more of your older school masking techniques. Like the line mask is a really good one because you can draw a line through, uh, you know, a, a non-linear, <laughs> multiple lines through a section there, smooth it out, use the, the curving options you have there. I got a whole different video on the line mask and on one, you can check that one out. And then you know do things with your your layers and make one of the layers scaled up or something like that. But net net, I mean, you know, why is the split field filter interesting? Is for photos where you do have this clean area, you can do that magnification, like the first one that I showed. I don't need to go into layers. I don't need to uh, create uh, on photo file or duplicate images on my uh, hard drive. I can just put it into a filter, totally non-destructive. And you know I'm, I'm good to go so it has its place and for many photos it'll work really really well hope you found the video useful questions go ahead and drop them below until next time my name is Scott Davenport have fun